So the state made it illegal for us to do what we were called to do, and that is to take care of patients. We're trained in medical school to help patients. We take the Hippocratic Oath and say that we want to help patients, we don't want to do harm, and actually now we're being told we can't help them. Well, when I first heard about COVID, my son was actually in China. So that's how we heard a little bit about the early reports and what was happening over there. But really never really thought it was going to have a significant impact over here until things started to change. We shifted as much to online as we could. We did the Zoom visits and so forth. Uh, we also furloughed a significant portion of our staff. And then for patients that uh, were going to be coming in, we would do a screen ahead of time. If a patient has abdominal pain, I need to examine the patient. Once testing became available, then we would do testing on all patients prior to surgery. Early on, I was surprised. I said, I can't imagine they're going to impact medicine because patients need medicine. One of the reasons it's a shock is because if you look at medicine as a whole, a significant proportion is dedicated to taking care of patients before we have bigger problems because it's the best thing to keep them safe. We've seen a number of patients that have had significant conditions and problems and illnesses because of the fact of the lockdown. For instance, one of my patients needed to have elective surgery, was sent to me by another physician, and I couldn't do it. She was younger and she attempted suicide and it was a serious attempt. She ended up eventually in a psych med unit and then the person in charge, the doctor in charge, the psychiatrist said, look it, she needs to have the surgery. I said, I know she needs to have the surgery, but they won't let me do the surgery. We had patients showing up late. So for instance, they had appendicitis, they had pain. They didn't know it was appendicitis, but they had pain. And they're waiting to come into the hospital. And by the time they came in, it was ruptured and perforated. We had gallbladders that were waiting, and by the time they came in, the gallbladder was gangrenous. What's happening in this case is we were told as providers, there's certain things you can't do. Couldn't take care of patients in these circumstances. The patients were told you can't get this care. So what you have is you have the state interfering in the relationship between a patient and a physician. It's a place they should never, ever be. Thankfully, the Mackinac Legal Foundation came through and helped support us as we said, look it, we're going to stand up for patients, we're going to stand up for common sense, and we're going to try to pursue an avenue that allows us to get care back to our patients. When we have situations where we need immediate action, where there's high levels of uncertainty, there's a danger of inaction, then we need to have these emergency powers. No one disputes that that was the case when this first occurred. However, we've now had 150 days to think about, to research, and to analyze these questions. And it's still significant. There's been 150,000 deaths nationally. There's been 6,500 deaths in Michigan. But it's time to return to the normal system that we use for, for examining important national questions like education, like healthcare, and like general public safety. These big decisions are not new to legislatures. Michigan's been a state since 1837, and we've been using it since its inception. Um, these are manners of which we've always had and have always been trying to get the most voices in to make the best decisions. This is one of the big misconceptions that's out there, which is that if we don't give the governor this power, we'll do nothing. Um, she's maybe done some things that are right. She's maybe done some things that are wrong. If we have more involvement, what we'll do end up with is, is perhaps a little bit different and hopefully better policy, but it doesn't mean that we're not going to take COVID seriously. The value of separations of powers is that Michigan is a large, diverse state. There's over 10 million people here, and these 110 representatives and 38 senators that we have hear these people. They bring their expertise and their knowledge to Lansing, and then we get the best decisions made. Unilateral decision-making sounds fine when you agree with the choice that's been made, but it also helps you get to disasters faster. We've had a number of legitimate questions about how to treat COVID patients in nursing homes. Uh, and in, more in particular in our case about the long-term effects of dealing with hospitals being shut down and, and critical care being denied to patients. How many of these um, mistakes could have been avoided if there were more people in the room? That's the danger, is that we're setting a precedent that there will always be a next emergency. Will it be abortion? Will it be gun control? Will it be racism? Will it be climate change? No governor is going to want to compromise if they don't have to. And our current governor is saying that she has unilateral authority to declare an emergency and to decide when it ends. Each subsequent governor is going to want that same power. We think the issues are fundamental. 
This is about patient safety, this is about their health, this is about our very fabric of government and, and our existence in the future as we move forward, not only as a state of Michigan, but as a country.